take you back now to the Mission Valley where Lake County authorities are on the scene of that plane crash this afternoon. We join KPAX reporter Connor McCauley who was with Lake County Sheriff Don Bell. Hey, I'm down here with Lake County Sheriff Don Bell asking a few questions about the recent plane crash out by Mission. Do you want to talk a little bit about what we have going on here? Yeah, at about 1600 hours today, the 911 dispatch center uh, received a call of a plane that crashed here in this field behind us. It's been a while since I've had to ride on one of these school buses and while the level of comfort to these seats has maybe not changed too much, the addition of seat belts to seven new MCPS buses and the retrofitting of 30 older buses has really raised the safety level for everyone along for the ride. In the past, it's been difficult for law enforcement to catch criminals who commit these kind of crimes. But in today's day and age, investigators have a new tool. Cameras like these can assist investigators in collecting evidence in their investigation. And in these low, low crimes, it has already helped them out immensely. The vehicle Harold is accused of stealing came out of Missoula County. But the pursuit started in Ronan, which is in Lake County. The vehicle chase then ended here at the Gray Wolf Peak Casino behind me. All this means that Harold will be facing charges in both jurisdictions, something that Lake County Sheriff Don Bell says will require a lot of collaboration between both sides through the investigative and legal process. There seems to be a lot of anger and pent up aggression in the world. Luckily for Missoulians, the newest entertainment option unhinged offers up the opportunity to get rid of some of that pent up aggression. I'm down here at the Missoula County Courthouse where protests continue into day eight. And despite some security concerns from people due to counter protesters, they say their message is too important to stay home. I was out here a few days ago with my daughter and um, that was before the militia showed up here with their guns and stuff and I was comfortable bringing her out here. But ever since they showed up, I felt like um, it may put her in danger to have her out here. So I haven't been out here the last couple days, but I'm back today. It's a diverse crowd that represents all the groups affected by injustice in the country. I think it's important that we all come together as minorities, as Missoulians, as Montanans, as, as Americans to recognize that we have a problem and to demand better. And if there was one message that they could get across, we're not saying all lives don't matter, but like right now, black lives do need help and we need people to support us so we can get a change and um, feel equal in America. Protesters down here say they could use things like Gatorade, Powerade, granola bars, just kind of things to keep them going through the day. And you can bring them, drop them off down here at the county courthouse tomorrow. In Missoula, Connor McCauley, MTN News. Thanks, Jill and Dennis. Judge Ed McLean is turning down Karma's request for the new trial after reviewing arguments made last week. Thanks, Dennis. The old gravel pit next to the Lolo School Building will finally be getting a facelift with a new multi-home development that will also feature some commercial property space and a park area. Thanks, Jill. Senator John Tester was in Missoula Friday afternoon to answer questions from his constituents at a town hall forum at the downtown Holiday Inn. Senator Tester started off the town hall by announcing President Trump's approval of the victims of Agent Orange Act. He's very happy about this. Yeah, yeah, we are very excited because uh, we have uh, a lot of a lot of uh, room in our house, and that is very good. It's so exciting. I think that Kase is such a hard worker, and I don't I don't think I could come up with any family more deserving than this. Uh, ever since my beginning at Soft Landing here in January. I have spent a lot of time with Kase's kids and they are just super sweet and I know that they're going to do so well and love this house. And speaking of the children, Kase says they're excited for their new home. Yeah, they, they're very excited. They need to, they want to play in, yeah, a lot of game in the, in the yard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Habitat for Humanity is excited to help the Lamonas with their first home. There, there are nightmares I can't even imagine that they have suffered through. And so for them to now be here in Missoula County and to be able to put a, a decent, affordable roof over their head is just profound. Now the Lamonas should be in their home by the end of the year, according to Habitat for Humanity. In Missoula, Connor McCauley, MTN News. With elections going on across western Montana, north of Missoula up in Lake County, elections administrator Katie Harding says this is one of the strongest turnouts that she's ever seen. Um, so right now we're sitting at a 75.66% uh, 
um, countywide turnout, which is higher than our 2016 and 2018 turnout. And we didn't quite get over 14,000 ballots back in 2018, so this is the highest amount of ballots I've ever seen here. Native Americans account for a little over 24% of Lake County's population, according to a 2019 estimate from the U.S. Census Bureau. So it's important that their voice is heard from and their votes are turned in. One of the issues, though, is the only ballot drop-off locations in Lake County is in Polson. So one organization has been helping get ballots from places like R. Lee up to the Lake County Courthouse. Uh, so right now we are uh, picking up ballots and we're giving rides to the election office to uh, maximize, I guess, the native vote. Um, it's been a pretty busy day. A pretty busy day, but one that's not quite finished yet. I just want to let everybody know on the Flathead Reservation, if you haven't voted yet, even if you haven't registered to vote, get in contact with us. You can uh, give us a text or a call at 406-661-3178, and we'll make sure that your vote gets put in today. The Lake County Sheriff's Office has been on hand here at the courthouse, but Sheriff Don Bell has told me everything today has run smoothly. They've ended up just helping direct people around the Lake County Courthouse, which has been closed for some time. He says they'll be here throughout the night, helping with whatever they can. In Lake County, Connor McCauley, MTN News. Two weeks ago, right here at the Missoula County Courthouse, we began covering the Black Lives Matter movement in Missoula. After meeting with and talking with a lot of people, there was one in particular that made us aware that there's sometimes more than meets the eye. I can't we met Stephanie Haynes during the first week of BLM rallies in downtown Missoula. As the mother of a black man, I fear for his safety. I have a black daughter who is of light skin and I don't fear for hers, and that breaks my heart. Stephanie and her family wanted to tell their stories so they could talk about some of those difficulties. Being the mother of two biracial children um, has not been an easy task. It's not easy uh, coming home and watching your mom cry because of how you were treated in school. Stephanie's son Isaiah is a darker complexion than his sister Jacina, who says watching her brother and best friend having to face such adversity was difficult. It's extremely rough on a day to day basis. <laughs> my brother has always been my best friend. It really is a struggle still to this day watching him, having people be very disrespectful because he is a different color from me. A recent encounter with police outside of Montana was just another instance of the struggles that has impacted the Haynes family throughout the years. And when we were coming back from lunch, the police were pulled us over because we went this way and then we went this way in a matter of 30 minutes. That's when Haynes said police put him in handcuffs because one officer said they suspected Haynes of having a gun. He walked up to the driver's door, pointed through the driver at me and said, you, get out of the car. I was like, excuse me? He said, now, get out of the car. And I got out and he put my hands behind my back, handcuffed me and searched me for a gun. And I was at work. I had a crayon in my pocket and he thought I had a knife. And all my co-workers are white and they were terrified that I was about to lose my life. Isaiah says his white co-workers did not receive the same treatment. One of my white friends got arrested because he had a warrant. But they didn't find that out until 35 minutes after harassing me. And how did they arrest him? Compared, Very, compared to me? Very calmly, very calmly. They were like, Mikhail, looks like you have a warrant out, bud. Isaiah is now raising two children of his own with his wife, Rosella. Their six-year-old Genesis is already facing the same problems her dad grew up with. That breaks my heart. Rosella says Genesis is afraid to take a water bottle into a store. She's like, I can't, oh, I can't bring this in because they're gonna think I'm stealing. Because they because have water bottles. For Genesis, she doesn't have a full understanding of why, but she knows she doesn't want it to continue. I just wish everybody could like people and be together and be friends again. When we're saying Black Lives Matter, we're saying care about us because we need you to. In Missoula, Connor McCauley, MTN News. Despite a pandemic and some pretty interesting discoveries during building their location, Cranky Sam Public House is now open, and the downtown location has more than just beer to offer. Cranky Sam's Public House is open for business, so now you can enjoy their expansive beer and wine menu while also exploring some of Missoula's past, a past that you probably won't learn in school. Yeah, I think most people have kind of heard that it kind of was the old red light district back in the day, but it was also a speakeasy like in the 30s and 40s, which 
was also kind of a neat history. Um, so we definitely had the, the, the red light district going on here and people were doing their thing and you know, it's not my place to judge. <laughs> On that expansive beer and wine list, there are also some of Cranky Sam's homebrewed beers. The COVID shutdown actually offered the new brewing operation a chance to get its bearings and create some great beers right off the bat. And during the COVID shutdown, we were able to actually brew and it kind of allowed our brewers some quiet time to, with a little bit less pressure on him to get our brews out. And he's done a great job even from the first batch. They've been amazing. And you can enjoy those on their highly sought out outdoor patio. It just extends into that area that people want in Missoula. It's a downtown south facing patio with natural mature trees that are kind of messy, but so we have to clean a lot, but it's okay. It's worth it because it just provides such a, a pretty environment. No food menu for the location yet, but thanks to Missoula's great food scene, you can still find something to eat while enjoying downtown's newest establishment. Food-wise, we don't do food yet. That's that's the bummer. But at the same time, it's great because we have a great relationship with Bob over at Vega Pizza. He's delivering in the house. Uh, we have food trucks out in the back. Notorious PIG will bring food over right across the way. So it's pretty great. Another place for Missoulians to go out and enjoy now that they have the opportunity to do so. Missoula wants to be out. They, they want to see their friends. They're engaging. They're excited and they're happy. I mean, they really are happy when they're in here, which makes me happy. Cranky Sam is using the app Digital Pour to keep track of their beer list, which means you can check their ever-expanding beer menu online. Good evening, I'm Connor McCauley. For almost 30 years, Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks has supported a program encouraging women to get outside and experience big sky country. Um. The Becoming an Outdoors Woman group meets throughout the year to teach the basics of all kinds of outdoor sports like hunting and fishing. Today in Frenchtown, an ice fishing class taught women how to use an auger to drill a hole, use ice fishing rods, and sonar fish finders. Instructors say that the class brings an amazing response amongst the women learning about the outdoors. I've had people tell me it's life changing, which is it's just amazing that they get to get out here and try something. Um, and this might be something they do forever and it might be something they find out this isn't for me, but that just means they can go on and try something else. Women who showed up for the class this morning took their new skills and caught bass all morning long. Officials from FWP supplied gear, snacks and a warming hunt. Participant Tiffany Quindery says she hasn't fished at all since she was a teenager. When she heard about the program, she knew she had to get involved. Never having ice fished, I wanted to get all the basics. And they supplied us with a big folder of information and it was great. I think it's more information that you'd get if you just like went out with a friend or something. You can find Becoming an Outdoors Woman on Facebook and the FWP website for more information. Good evening, I'm Connor McCauley. Tomorrow, President Trump plans to meet with law enforcement officials for a roundtable discussion at the White House. The meeting comes with new fallout over his response to protests. Nicole Killian has more from the White House. Barley growers are facing a unique challenge this year that for once doesn't involve Mother Nature. With more on this story, here's the Montana Ag Network's Russell Nemitz. After the break, more on how Montana Tech's athletic department is handling the racial equality movement. Montana Tech athletes play a big role in the Butte community. The Diggers athletic department wants to make sure that their athletes have the opportunity to have their voices heard. MTN Sports' Dom Tibbetts has more on how Tech's athletic department is opening its doors and ears to its black student athletes. Tonight on KPAX. Happy Father's Day. We have some stories about dads for you tonight at 10 o'clock. Good evening. I'm Connor McCauley. Law enforcement successfully negotiated the surrender of a man who barricaded himself in his residence Sunday morning. The Montana National Guard is partnering with local search and rescue teams in and around Helena to practice ways they can work together on future rescues. Elkhorn Search and Rescue and True North Search Dogs came to Fort Harrison this morning for hoist training. As for Montana's barley crop, the latest USDA crop progress report shows 96% of the crop has been planted. While restaurants, resorts and other venues were suspended due to the pandemic, local farmers felt the effects firsthand as they could no longer sell their products locally. 
KPAX's Megan Mannering reports on one farm in the Bitterroot and how they've managed to survive. Well, in typical Missoula fashion, it was a cloudy and rainy one this morning here in the Garden City. We turn to your meteorologist, Louis Dorch, to find out if that's going to continue. Louis, thanks for sticking with us here on Father's Day. We'll see you back here in the morning for Montana This Morning.